We're still in the uh, in the Gospel of Mark, and I don't know about you, but I find the Gospel of Mark very exhausting. It's always moving. I mean, it's the shortest, but it's go go go. There's not really any downtime. And the story we're working on today, uh, out of John, uh, sorry, Mark seven, uh, has Jesus trying to be someplace where he's not seen, where he's not recognized, where he can just kind of chill for a bit. You know, let let it go, let it down. Because he's on the go constantly, and he's always his people around him. And, well, he doesn't get that as an opportunity. I feel that this week. I, I, I don't know what your week is, is like, but mine this week has been a constant motion. Either my brain has been moving, or my body has been moving, or you name it. Meetings and interviews and just the endless list. On top of, you know, basic living, like paying bills, household care, and that kind of stuff that we, we all are stuck with doing, there's been no time to just rest, to stop, to, to think, to just be mindless for a while. That's all Jesus was looking for, going into a house where no one would know him. He could have a break. It just didn't happen. So out of that level of exhaustion, that level of, of desire to be by himself for a little while, he is approached by a woman who is identified as a Seraphonician, a Gentile. Now, we have the story in, in other Gospels. It's a, it's a little more fleshed out. But we have Jesus at his kind of worst. You know, if you're a, someone who was raised in a household or in a, a church tradition that convinced you that Jesus was always happy, always right, always open to people, uh, never had a bad day, never was in a bad mood, never made a misstep. This scripture actually shows you that's not exactly true. We have Jesus being fed up, tired, no grace, no thought, just blup with the racial bigotry that he would have been exposed to his entire life. And he said she wasn't the one he was coming for. Now, she pushed back. I mean, this is a mother who was quite desperate for her child, and any of us who have been in that position are going to push back. We're not going to take the first answer we get. So this woman pushed back, and Jesus realized he was wrong, and he assured the woman that her faith was sufficient, that her she can go home and her child would be cured, that the demon, whatever that meant, would be gone. Now, far too often, people are trying to explain away Jesus' behavior and explain away what demons are, because we really want to know, especially it's, it's part of the DNA of, of the Western mindset, really, to understand something. But the understanding here is simply Jesus is having a bad day. Tradition doesn't want Jesus to ever have a bad day. But he did. He was tired. He was done. He did not want to have anybody more around him. And the reason we can know that, not only is the opening of this, uh, of this scripture that he went into a house where he hoped no one knew him, but after the healing of this daughter, he is approached by someone else, or he's brought to someone else, who has been deaf and mute his entire life, could not speak, could not hear. Jesus spits, I mean, it's kind of gross, but spits on the, on the, somewhere, we're not exactly sure, um, touches the tongue, says something, and suddenly the man could speak. And then Jesus says, don't tell anyone, which is, is a real theme in Mark. And of course, doesn't work out because the more, and the scripture even says this, the more Jesus says, don't tell anyone, the more people are going to tell what they have experienced. And why wouldn't they? These are miracles of, of healing, of wholeness, of, of cleansing, of, of repatriation in many ways. We have here two stories of people who are outsiders, people who are not included in society, who would be not necessarily considered. The woman, first of all, by being a woman, um, second of all, by being a foreigner, a Gentile, the man, because he couldn't communicate, he couldn't participate in any of the daily dialogue. We don't even know if they had communities around them that would really be as supportive as they needed to be. Jesus took time, even when he didn't want to, he took time to make them whole, to make their, their circumstances better. You know, sometimes when we are so caught up in our busy, 
We're so caught up in our tired, so caught up in our to-do list. We kind of forget where ministry happens. Churches are, are notoriously bad at busy work. Every committee needs to have something. There's events, often fundraising. There's seasonal stuff we have to get ready for. It's endless. And then people come to church and they leave again saying, I didn't feel the spirit there. I, I, I didn't feel renewed. I didn't, I didn't feel the connection. And so in many ways, times they stop going because they don't see attending church as a place for community connection. That's a, a legitimate thing, especially if you've got a church where you feel the hypocrisy is a little, a little thick, that there's not real place for people who are kind of outside of the box or, or maybe not part of, of the in crowd. The story we're looking at today shows Jesus going outside the social boundaries, the social norms. That is often the place where we do encounter Christ, where we do have those moments of, of completion and wholeness and, and healing and inclusion and looking at our troubles and finding that some of that burden has been removed through our interaction with Christ. Jesus didn't really function within the system. Our faith calls us to function outside the system, outside our comfort, outside institutional gatherings. Now that's hard because community is important and social place is important and Churches as, as institution, the way we've understood it, most of us, it's a place of, of constant. It's a place of, of engagement, of, of inclusion. But that's not where people often have found Christ. And the point of our faith is not having membership of an institution. It's not adhering to human-made expectations. The point of our faith is to engage God through our relationship with uh, and understanding of Jesus and making the world different. Jesus was in the situation where he was faced with a woman who was an outsider for gender as well as um, uh, uh, ethnic reasons. She was not acceptable in the community. Now, she could even have been a single parent for all we know because there's no mention of a partner in any of the stories that we tell of her. And usually it's the man who goes and, and looks for this kind of opportunity. She was outside and yet she pushed and she had that connection with Jesus that needed to happen in order to make her life work again. The man who could not communicate he was left out, and it wouldn't matter how many places he was welcomed into. If he couldn't communicate, he was going to be on the outside. Through an encounter with Jesus, that issue was removed. We might not have situations where we can claim our, our child is, has been removed of a demon or that we suddenly can speak when we couldn't before. But there are other subtler, smaller ways, quieter ways, must just as, as important ways that we encounter Christ when we seek out Christ, not necessarily religion or the institutional community. We want to have that kind of relationship. That is what drives us to be the people God has always called us to be, to be the 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 peacemakers, the change makers. And it's okay in all of that also to just kind of take off for a bit and rest. It's kind of ironic that this is the scripture at the beginning of September in North America, or even Northern Europe, all of Europe, I guess, where educational um, uh, schools, universities, uh, all of that's starting again. Summer vacation for most of us is, is over now, and we're getting back. If someone 
I posted on uh, social media not that long ago, we're in the burr months, which means that things are getting darker, things are, are getting busier. We've got a lot of cultural celebrations coming up that are very family specific, some of them very faith specific. And this is the last time we really get a cultural break before the craziness of the next number of months takes on. We're tired. Jesus was tired. And it's okay to say, I'm done with all of this for now. Because the place we're going to encounter Jesus, the place we're going to get that energy refill, that spiritual connection again, is going to be outside of all of the expectations we have, of all of the, the social norms we take for granted. That's where we're going to encounter Jesus again. Spend some time in prayer. Spend some time looking for where you're going to encounter Jesus. Jesus was tired. He was looking for people who didn't recognize him. But we live in a world where everybody has some connection and recognizes Jesus in action in all of us. We need to find that place. Take that time to rest and look outside the box for where our new sense of renewal and wholeness will come from. Christ really is with us. We just sometimes have to stop our busy and start to pay attention to where we might find that relationship. <laughs>